initial audit engagement. This means it is going to be our first audit of the client and we now need to consider the opening balances. Guys, here is just a little diagram and a breakup of the PPE balance just so that you can start to visualize what we're looking at. There will be an opening carrying amount, there will be additions that get added, disposals that get removed, there will be depreciation of the current year, and then there will be the closing carrying amounts. So that you can see, just an example, and PPE, what would you have? There would be a quantity times a price. That's how that's going to land up in the financials. There's a physical item for you. Okay. So let's go and look at what we need to do about this opening balance. And consider the fact that they may not have been audited in the prior year or they may have been audited in the prior year. So how is that going to affect our audit of the opening balances? If, one, they were audited in the prior year or two, they were not audited in the prior. So obviously audited in the prior year would be a lot more helpful to us, but if they weren't, we need to have procedures. Just note here, the first procedure is the same irrespective of whether they were audited or not. I need to agree the opening balance to the prior year closing balance in the accounts and records or the financials. I must make sure they have carried forward the correct balance. Now I get to look at the different work I will do. So if they were audited in the prior year, I need to do the same things I would have done if I was using an expert, whether it be management or an auditor's expert, I need to do the same things we had to consider as auditors in our pre-engagement assessment to see whether we could take on the work. Okay, so our first thing is to evaluate the external party, which would be the prior auditors. Are they objective and are they competent? Both have the same procedures we've done above. So for objectivity of the prior auditors, inquire with management and the external party about whether they have any interest or relationships with the entity. For competence, consider personal experience with the prior auditors, discussions with them, look at their qualifications and consider if they're members of professional bodies. Then, once I have passed one, I'm comfortable that they are objective and competence, we move on to two, which is evaluating the adequacy of their work. So, reviewing their working papers, inquiring about how they perform the work, recalculating, comparing any assumptions to that in the market. And if I'm comfortable with their work, I can move on and continue with the current year closing balance audit. Okay. If I'm not comfortable with their work, then I have to consider the fact that they were ultimately not audited or do the work I would do if they were not audited because I'm not going to rely on them anyway. So, what do we do if we cannot rely on the prior year auditors? First of all, we need to look at the nature of the balance. Is it a balance with a third party? Because if it is, we've just looked at ISA 505, we can get an external confirmation. from the third party to help us with evidence. So guys, that would be if it was a debtor, if it was a creditor, if there was a loan with a third party. So that's nice and simple. We can tick that off. Is there a balance with a third party where there's a cash flow that we can consider that if we don't get an external confirmation, 
we can do something else. And once again, that comes from ISA 505. We've just done it. The alternative procedures, subsequent payments for our creditors and subsequent receipts for our debtors. Guys, both of those we're going to get at in detail when we look at the assertions. So I'll actually break down how we go about doing or testing the subsequent payments or subsequent receipts to get the evidence we need. Okay, but that's what we can do from our ISA 505 standard. And then I've got what happens if it's a balance that comprises of physical items. So you can physically see there's inventory, there's a property, there's plant, there's equipment. What could I do then? We can do a rollback where we do a physical count at year end. We then add back any disposals during the year. We deduct additions during the year and we can get to our opening balance. And that's exactly what you'll state. Perform a rollback doing the following and you will list it like that. Okay, so there are ways we can get evidence on the opening balances if we are uncomfortable with the work that has been performed already. So let's go into ISA 510 to make sure you can find all this in the standard. So we've got your ISA 510, Initial Audits Engagements, Opening Balances. Scope Objective Requirements. Let's quickly have a look at those that objective here, just so we can see. The purpose of the standard is to make sure that opening balances are free from material misstatements and to see that the accounting policies have been consistently applied. So it's important that we do look at the policies because that's going to affect if I've got a direct comparison or whether I need to actually adjust the opening balance to be on the new policy to make that direct comparison. Okay, so the first thing is we need to read the most recent financials so that we have some understanding on the opening balances and if there was a previous auditor's report. Okay, then we need to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. So we first need to make sure that the prior year closing balance has been correctly brought forward. So that was one of our general procedures. We can now go and add something where there's an opening balance to say, consider whether the accounting policy has been appropriately applied. We already do this when we know that there is going to be a balance that has a specific accounting policy, like with estimates. Okay, then we need to do one or more of the following. If the prior year were audited, we need to review the prior year working papers. If they weren't, we need to evaluate whether we need to perform procedures in the current year. And then we need to go and do the performance of those. So I've highlighted A3 to A7 here which is going to help us to understand ways in which we can get the evidence we need. So, A4 says, if the prior periods were audited, we need to review the prior period working papers. Before we do that, we must make sure that the prior auditors are competent and independent. They don't give you additional procedures.
Therefore, I've just used the expert procedures. And also considering looking at the information in the scenario to see if there are threats to any of those fundamental principles or independence. Okay. Also looking at or through communication, we can see if they've complied with the ethical requirements. So that was something where we said get that declaration from them. That they have complied with the ethical requirements. Then it goes and says, okay, let's now assume we can't rely on the previous auditors or there were no previous auditors. For current assets and liabilities, we could do subsequent collection or payment for accounts receivables or accounts payables. And that will give us some evidence over existence, potentially rights and obligations, completeness and valuation at the beginning of the year. Okay, so that's what we've already said. I've also added here loans, guys, because a loan could be a receivable or a payable, and therefore, again, if there's been any subsequent payments or receipt, it could help us to get some evidence over that opening balance, which is the prior year closing balance. Then it says, in the case of inventories, something else we could potentially do is going to the physical count at year end and reconciling back to opening inventory quantities. And then once we've done that, we can perform procedures on the valuation of opening inventory because we've got the quantity from it. We would also have the closing valuation. We would also have the accuracy of additions and, and disposals or, or sales. And so from that, we can then get to the opening valuation. Okay, then it says for non-current assets and liabilities, such as property, plants and equipment, investments, long-term debt, what we may be able to do is get confirmation with third parties. But remember guys, I've said to you where there's a physical asset like PPE or like physical investment, you can do the same as we do for inventory because you can go and count them. Whereas where it, if it's a third party type of non-current asset or liability where there isn't that physical asset, the third party confirmation would be sufficient. Okay, then it just makes a note chat to say that if the opening balances do contain misstatements, we need to consider what the effect on the current year financials are going to be. But that's only going to affect you in the next stage of the audit process because we're looking at concluding an evaluation of misstatements. So if the opening balance has a misstatement, then you know the closing balance has a misstatement unless that misstatement was rectified through a journal entry during the current year. Okay, so it's very important to see if that misstatement does fall through into the closing balance. And if so, we potentially are going to have an evaluation of misstatements, but that's concluding stage. Okay, we've got to make sure that the accounting policies are consistently applied. So remember we said that that's something we've always done for estimates anyway, because we know they have accounting policies. How do we see if they've applied consistently by doing a prior year to current year consideration? Okay, we've got to look at the previous year auditor's report if there were any modifications to that opinion because there were misstatements, which means potentially our closing balances have those misstatements if they weren't corrected during the year. Again, only going to affect you in the next stage of the audit process. Okay, and then we'll have to conclude based on whether those opening balances do affect the closing balances. Okay, and again next stage of the audit process. So not to worry. Okay, just a point here that if we say that the accounting policies are not consistently applied, then again, it could affect our audit opinion. Okay.